This is Hemant Shah. I'm the chairman of the IPC 2581 Consortium. IPC 2581 Revision C, which came out in 2020, added a new capability which is very unique and very powerful. So what it allows users to do is to do DFM exchange with their manufacturing partners using 2581. So when you hand off your design to your manufacturer, typically your manufacturer will come back and give you some technical queries, ask you for some exceptions, or you, you might have some design errors in your design. The manufacturer then passes those DFM errors back to you in a, either a spreadsheet format, email, PowerPoint, or some combination of those. With 2581, the manufacturer can produce a DFM exchange module of 2581 that can go into your design and you can load that query into your ECAD tool and now all the questions or queries that are coming out are in the context of your design and you can cross probe between the query or the DFM error and your design at, at the same time. What's more is that you can respond to the queries through IPC 2581. So in your ECAT tool, you can respond to a question, can they make this exception or can they eliminate certain things? And you can say yes or no, or you can give more specific instructions. All of that can then be sent back in IPC 2581 format to your manufacturer. And this iteration can happen multiple times. And what's important is that data and multiple iterations is all stored in one file and available for you to analyze after the fact or after you want to, your board is done to look at what went on. And it is an archive that can be data mined over a period of time to see if you are doing the same things again and again that you should avoid doing to save time. The manufacturers also can do the same data mining. So revision C was, was a big overhaul of the standard. One of the big things was the overhaul rigid flex support. Rigid flex was supported in Rev B, but Rev C overhauls it and makes it more robust and complete. Similarly, we've added more component support, so your screen down components can be represented, embedded components can be represented, wire bond components can be represented, and so on. So a lot of in overall in that. We overhauled the impedance uh, specification, so now you don't need impedance tables at all, and you have the complete flexibility and, and uh, uh, diversity of impedances you want to represent in your design that can be specified in your design, and therefore a one file can take care of all your design intent and build intent. Then additionally, we've got points support, um, then we have edge plating support, um, we have a lot net shorting, so if you have an RF uh, circuit or lot, even if you're not doing an RF circuit, if you had an intentional short between two signals that you wanted to do, that can now be specified through 2581, eliminating yet another design file or another file that you hand off the manufacturer saying these two nets were intentionally shorted. So there are a lot of new things in Revision C. So the benefit to the designers with Revision C is that one, DFM exchange is electronic rather than paper-based or electronic paper-based. Second is you still eliminate additional instructions that you have for net short, edge plating, embedded components. So all of these things that you were doing through additional files is eliminated and now you you can just do it in your design and that data is then transferred to your manufacturer so that's the benefit to that so it's a similar benefit to manufacturers so manufacturers right now have to deal with multiple design files or uh, uh, multiple files that you hand off 2581 was complete but there were certain things that were not uh, included like net short as an example it was not not included Embedded components was another example. Wire bonds was another example. Those things are now included in Rev C, so the manufacturers don't have to go back to the customer, ask for additional data, or don't have to read multiple files. So the, the designers don't have to produce as much data, 
and consumers don't have to deal with multiple faults. So it's a win-win situation on both sides. DFM exchange is another benefit. The manufacturers don't have to deal with producing some other piece of communication that the user may not understand or have to answer questions about. So both ways, it's a benefit for the designers and a benefit for the manufacturers. IPC 2581 has also been linked to IPC CFX, which stands for Connected Factory Exchange. And by doing that, we have enabled a way to pass the design data to the manufacturers that can be used in the Industry 4.0 IPC CFX. So that's included in the CFX latest version of IPC CFX. And uh, uh, the other thing that the uh, 2581 is, it's included in the IPC Digital Standard 2551, IPC 2551. So digital standard, digital twin standard is I important for the manufacturers because it models the factory floor and it can take a design data and softwares can simulate how that design will be manufactured on a particular line or multiple lines. Manufacturers can choose a particular you know, line that would be more optimum for them to produce a specific design or alternatively that feedback of efficiency can be sent back to the designers and a slight change like moving a component further away from the edge of the board may optimize a particular line and get your product out faster. So it's a win-win situation. So with the Industry 4.0, the new standards are now supported, now supporting 2581 to optimize the factory floor and to streamline the building of the board.